Hello everybody, good morning and welcome to the United Stands. I'm Mark Goldbridge and this is your latest Manchester United news. As we say, enough is enough. Enough of this talk about Gareth Southgate. Enough of this media pile-on. Enough of this nonsense. A line needs to be drawn in the sand. We've got stories coming out that United players want Gareth Southgate. Completely and utterly toxic and dangerous. We'll talk about that. We've got talk that Eric Ten Hag wants to buy a Munich job. Absolute nonsense. Uh, we're also going to talk about something around Sir Alex Ferguson, which is for a little bit later for the Chuff Monsters. But reality here, it's a news show. We're reacting to the news. Roy Keane's even saying, I could see it happening with Gareth Southgate. This needs calling out. This needs calling out. Enough is enough. I thought it was a nightmare two days ago. It seems it's a reality that we have to have every day be linked with Gareth Southgate. He's rubbish. He's absolute rubbish. If any of these journalists or ex-players want to sit down and have a proper chat about Southgate instead of spreading absolute nonsense, let's get it on. Let's get it on. Because I tell you what, where would we be without you? Where would we be without Manchester United fans? And what makes me laugh more than anything is this constant pile-on of fan media or fan entertainment as being toxic. And we've had three days of ex-players, journalists and media outlets talking about Gareth, South Gareth Southgate being the next Manchester United manager, talking about United players wanting Southgate. It's complete bullshit and it's ridiculously toxic. But they're all right to do it. Oh, leave them alone. Leave them alone. Let them pile on and poison our football club in a moment of triumph. Let them spread a load of shit and destabilise us. Everyone lets them off the hook. Oh, I tell you what, though. If United Stand or another outlet does a video saying, what if Southgate's the next manager, you toxic shithouses. It's a joke. We need to call this out. We need to call it out. And I'm going to start off with point number one. The biggest mic drop of all. Why is it that we are persisting with allowing these Southgate stories to be attached to our football club when the biggest criticism of Eric Ten Hag this season has been style of play. What's this? What's the style of play, Gary? I've got my white trainers on on a Monday night and I'm jumping around like Zebedee on a trampoline. What's the style of play with these Manchester United players? You can park a bus in the midfield. What's the style of play, Gary? Right, OK. I, I actually think the style of play that we're playing at Manchester United is very obvious because of the players that we've got. We have to play a low line. But why is it that if you are a foreign coach like Eric Ten Hag, you get analysed to shit about your style of play? But if you're an English waistcoat wearing boring manager, you can get linked to the Man United job. You can get linked to the Man United job and nobody talks about style of play. You know what? This is the first thing I would sit down and say to Gary or Roy or anybody else. I would say, hold on a minute. Before we talk about... Because Roy Keane sat there and said, I can see I can see Gareth Southgate being the next Man United manager. Yeah, you know, he's got a good relationship with Dan Ashworth. I'm like, what am I watching? Is this AI Keane? Roy Keane being told that Gareth Southgate might not be the, might be the next England manager and he's not smashing up the studio and throwing Gary Neville out the, out of the room. Like... What world are we living in at the moment? Roy Keane, the greatest Man United captain I've ever known, the guy who gets Man United, sat there sipping a coffee going, I can see him being the next manager of Man United. You know, he's got a good relationship with Dan Ashworth. For God's sake, we're, we're screwed. Like, what? Are they, are they being paid? What's going on? Like, I can't speak. You know, as Man United fans, we know... This is an absolute disaster of an appointment if they decide to do it. But players who've actually won things with United, who know what United's all about, sat there going, oh, I can see it happening, yeah. Why, why, why are you not emotional about this? Why are you not breaking chairs? I, I, I don't get it. But look, the biggest thing of all here is style of football. Let's have a grown-up conversation. Let's bring the blood pressure down. Let's be calm. Let's calm down here, right? Style of football. Ten Hag has been, you know, slaughtered from pillar to post this season about style of football, despite having fundamental players injured that make him play the way that he wants to play. None more so than Martinez. We have to play a deeper line without him. So Ten Hag, oh, he's got to go. I don't care if you win. 
the style of football. Oh, I don't care if we beat Liverpool 4-3. The style of football. Oh, the style of football. He's got to go. He's got to go. Oh, Southgate. Yeah. Any old die and any old die. Get, get Gareth in. Yeah, lovely guy. Get 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 Southgate in. Write the articles. Wow, we love Southgate. Yeah, what a nice guy Gareth is. Style of football. You're moaning at Ten Hag for style of football. Who's actually taken a team to a Champions League semi-final playing amazing football. He's actually won titles playing amazing football. You want to put Gareth Southgate in, who basically shits on a Ferrari and smudges it in. And what I mean by that is that England team is full of talented footballers and he makes them play like Prime Stoke. Style of football. Don't talk to me about style of football at Man United anymore if you want to talk about Gareth Southgate. I don't care whether you're an ex-player in the media or a fan. Never, ever, ever mention style of football in Man United again if you're contemplating Southgate. You absolute turbo prats. What are you talking about? This guy's style of football, don't care about his waistcoat. Don't care about, you know, what you think about Southgate. The fundamental mic drop moment is his style of football from start, from player to today is rank. Absolute rank. He has got no CV even for six months of playing good football. His whole career is ridiculed for shit football. He's a great He's a great guy around the dressing room. Oh, he'll get his towel out and everything. Style of football, terrible. So why are we having this conversation? Why are we even having this conversation when his style of football is universally terrible? Absolute terrible. And also, I heard um, Darren Bent say yesterday that if, if Gareth Southgate wins the Euros, he's a better manager than Eric Ten Hag. As I said on Twitter... A box of cornflakes has got more tactical acumen than Gareth Southgate and could manage that England team to the Euros. I could manage that team to the final of the Euros from a bloody lilo in Mallorca on a WhatsApp Zoom in the dressing room. Right, the team's this. Go and express yourself. Oh, we've won 3-0. See you later. I mean, that England team could be managed by anybody. It is so good. If anything, he's the weakness. So what a load of crap. But the biggest thing I want to bring in the news this morning is this. Let me just read this out. So this is from two articles, yeah? I, I'm fuming about this. I, I, and you know what? You, you're gonna fall, you, you might want to sit down because if you don't, you'll faint. Goldbridge is going to stick up for some United players here, right? So, I, I mean, I do stick up for them when they deserve it. But obviously, a lot of time, they don't deserve it. So this is from the ESPN. Southgate's relationship with the likes of Kane and Bellingham could put United to the front of the queue to sign either of them when they choose to return to England from Bayern Munich and Real Madrid. I Is Gareth Southgate a shareholder in ESPN? I've never heard such shit in all my life. So, you know what? If I went to school with Margot Robbie and she's happily married, if she ever gets divorced, I'll be at the front of the queue because I'll go, we went to school together, we were in gym class together, we, did, we were in art together. I mean, what a, what a pitiful bit of journalism that is. Oh my God, if if Harry Kane and Jude Bellingham decide to leave Bayern Munich and Real Madrid, we'll be right at the front of the queue because they like Gareth Southgate. Well, well, get your coat, Eric. Why didn't you tell me this before? I mean, what a load of shit. I mean, do you really think Jude Bellingham is going to go, oh, I love Gareth Southgate and the fact that United are eighth and shit doesn't matter because I love Southgate. Forget it, Liverpool. Forget it, Pep. Forget it, Arsenal. I know you're competing for the title every year. I want to go and play for Man United or eighth because uh, Southgate's there and I like him. I like so you can forget about it. I'm not. I'm not bothered. What nonsense! In addition, his appointment at Old Trafford would likely be welcomed by players such as Harry Maguire, Marcus Rashford, Mason Mount, and Luke Shaw, who have all shone for him under uh, for England. Yeah, last time I checked, Mason Mount's not been picked for England for over a year. He's not really shining, is he? Um, but no, it gets worse. It gets worse, b worse because in the mirror, several Manchester United players are already on board with the idea of Gareth Southgate becoming the club's new manager. Right. 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 This needs to stop. This is toxic journalism and it's ridiculously dangerous. And if I did this or a fellow fan content creator did this, they would quite rightly be slaughtered for it. It is absolutely disgraceful, and it is not fair on Rashford, Maguire, Luke Shaw, and Mount. It's just not fair. Because when you say several United players are on board with Gareth Southgate becoming the next Man United manager, 
You don't need to be Sherlock Holmes to figure out who they are. It's Luke Shaw, Marcus Rashford, Harry Maguire and potentially Mason Mount. It's anybody who's in the England squad who's a Man United player because they're the only ones who've spent time with Gareth Southgate. It ain't going to be Bruno Fernandes sat in Portugal going, yeah, I love Gareth Southgate. Get him in. I like the waistcoats. So it is horrific journalism. It is toxic and it causes a potential pile on to our players who may not have said that. And I don't think that they have. I think it's speculative journalism. I think it's dangerous journalism. And we are a football club at the moment that is in a fragile position when it comes to fan player relationships, especially with certain players like Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford doesn't need a story attaching him to wanting Southgate at all. It's not fair. And I'm going to call it out because we get wrongly called out as fans as being toxic and negative. We don't make up stories like that, that these you know, that Maguire, Shaw and Rashford want Southgate as manager. Hold on a minute. So they want Southgate as manager in a March international break when we've got a huge run in. We've got an FA Cup semi-final. And I am to believe that three or four United players are toxic elements in the dressing room, um, you know, presiding over a downfall of our current manager to bring in Gareth Southgate. You know my response to that. If I had any proof of that happening... Get them out, drop them, get rid of them. I don't think it's true. I don't think it's true at all. I think it's a load of bollocks. And I think it needs calling out because this is what we get fed as journalism this week. This is what we are being fed and it's and it needs calling out. It's not good enough. It's absolutely toxic gutter press. You cannot put stories out like that. That you can't. I think it's disgusting that we're being linked with Gareth Southgate. Absolutely vile from a footballing point of view. But I think it's absolutely incredible that lines are being written about, you know, current United players what are on board with Gareth Southgate. So basically, they're mercenaries. Basically, there's mutiny on the bounty. Basically, they are toxic and they are, they are, they are sabotaging and stabbing this club in the back and this current manager to get Gareth Southgate in. Come on, it has to stop and it has to be called out. And I don't know why it is that the mainstream get away with it. And yet we'll talk about something and we're toxic. It's not fair. It's not right. And it's bang out of order. I'll tell you for free. Well, I wouldn't charge you anyway, but I'll tell you for free. If three United players factually are behind Eric Ten Hag and are stunned by how this is even out there. It's laughable. It's absolutely laughable. In the dressing room, it's laughable, this whole new manager talk um, and they want Ten Hag out. You saw it on Sunday, the effort in extra time to go and win that game, the way the players were running down to the corner to celebrate with Ahmad. This is what I would call something that I used to see quite regularly when I was growing up, where the media controlled the story. It is disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting that our players' names and our club can be played out like a pantomime in public for the benefit of Gareth Southgate or his fans. It is a disgrace. This story should be in the toilet. It shouldn't even... It's an embarrassment that Gareth Southgate is linked with the Man United job. I still hear the words and think, what is going on? He has got no style of football. He, marries, he, he manages the best England team I've ever seen and is massively over-promoted just because he's a bit of a politician manager. Why is he being linked to Manchester United? Absolute farce. But when you start bringing Man United players into it and saying that United players are on board, this is so dangerous. It is so toxic because we know who those players would have to be. And that causes United fans to, who don't want Southgate to think badly of those players if they believe it. Well, I urge you today not to believe it. I urge you today not to think negatively of Luke Shaw or Harry Maguire or Marcus Rashford. Because I don't for one minute think that those three players are there championing Gareth Southgate. And even if they were, if I was Ineos, I'd sell them. You shouldn't be listening to players. That shouldn't be happening anyway. But... It is ridiculously unfair to say, to further your shit story, to make up lies about United players. It's wrong. 
And we know, we know that not everybody has the brain like you do to go, I don't believe this story, it's bollocks. There will be some people out there who will read it or hear about it and go, get rid of Rashford, get rid of Maguire. I've always said they're shit. And now they're trying to get Ten Hag out for Southgate so they can get a long contract. Because ultimately, it's not true. I don't believe it's true. But if it was true, imagine one of those England players does want Gareth Southgate. Why do they want him? Because he's their mate. Because he's going to give them a long contract. Because he's going to pick them. So on every single level, it's completely and utterly disgusting. Uh, Marcus Stevenson, welcome to Members Club. Nate says, signing Southgate will send United to the gutter. Plus, I recommend you re-watch your match reaction under Rangnick, especially away United versus Arsenal and away Everton, says Nate. Well, you could tell us what I said. I know against... Ev I know against... Um, I don't know whether it was that Everton game, Nate, but I remember saying I don't trust the players, which I, in a footballing sense, I, I still don't. I still think they're capable of putting in a bad performance. Uh, rival fans would love United to get Southgate, says Dean, and that sums it up. Uh, Peter says, guarantee all top teams like Bayern will be after Ten Hag if we fire him. That's how funny all this is. Um, uh, that's from Peter. Uh, Rookie says, it's probably true as a lot of our players want an easy time and an easy ride and want to run the club and are happy with mate rates, says Rookie. Look, I'm not talking about Southgate. I I'm, I'm, I'm bored of it. I'm bored of talking about him. It's ridiculous. We shouldn't be giving it any oxygen. The only reason I am is because I think these journalists need calling out for the toxicity they're causing around our football club. I mean, can I just break this down for you? We beat Liverpool on Sunday in one of the best games we've seen in a very long time. The players played for the badge. The manager did really well with his substitutes. We won 4-3 and it pissed all the media off. So what have they done? They've created, within two days, a story about Gareth Southgate that they're running with day after day after day after day. This is a toxic pile-on. They're bringing players into it as well. Why are people not enraged by this? We were in a really good place on Sunday and Monday. Positivity, something to play for, players playing for the badge. Two days later, negativity, toxicity, get rid of your manager. The players don't like the manager. Who's feeding this? Who, who's putting this story out there? The media. We, we need to be wise to this. We need to wake up about the people who have the best interests of this club at heart. And that's the fans. The fans are more powerful than this. Don't be led by them. It's toxic. It's ridiculous how these journalists can't accept a win over Liverpool and talk about anything good during an international break, says Z3. Carlos, welcome to the Members Club. Roy said he didn't want him. He could just see it, says Angelo. And Southgate has had the pick of the best English players yet won what, says Ginger Red, 68. Um, also, you know what? Just very, very quickly, um, international football shit. It's about 25% slower than domestic football. And you only manage two games every three months. You know, you're going to put a guy who's been doing that, he's indoctrinated into it. He's been doing it for eight years. Eight years he's been managing international football. And you want to put him into day-to-day -day managing a top Premier League club idiotic I'd take your bunny rabbit instead of Southgate said um, Ethan it started as a bad joke then ex-players started talking and suddenly it's real we as the United Standard back in the minority again says Nick P Mark clearly British bias media says Seth morning gang Southgate to United goes to show what putting the Manchester back into Manchester United really means says Rye and like Danny Merkin on TalkSport saying Southgate would be great for United manager, but when asked if it would be, be good at Liverpool, he was silent, says 90 Stevens. Yeah, people, are, they're, they're trying to sabotage us. But look, um, interestingly, moving it on, uh, Christian Folk yesterday, journalist, was talking, uh, who is obviously a very, very well-sourced Bayern Munich journalist, was saying that Eric Ten Hag dreams of managing Bayern Munich. Um I, I, I think the, the the balance on this is incredible. You know, I mean, the, the British press are bias. They are bias, whether it's players, whether it's managers. If you've got a British passport, they're right up your arse. And that's always been the case. But this is an interesting story from Christian Falk because I think that I don't think Eric Ten Hag wants to manage Bayern Munich. Um, he's young enough to manage Bayern Munich in the future. I don't think if Bayern Munich said, Give, we, want the, we want you to take the job, Eric, he would go. But imagine this scenario. Imagine Bayern Munich say, we really want you. And Ten Hag says to Man United, I don't like where the club's going. I want to leave. And Bayern Munich get Ten Hag and we get Southgate. 
I mean, that is, you know, I would say to all these people that wanted Ten Hag, well done. Well done. That's a lesson in life. Be careful what you wish for. Not that you're wrong to be Ten Hag out. I'm just saying is that sometimes you can be unhappy with something and wish it wasn't there and then you get something worse. I'm not saying that because you're Ten Hag out, it's your fault. Obviously, it's not. But it's a lesson in life. Be careful what you wish for. Because you might think something's not very good and you want to replace it and then you get something that's a lot worse. You know, sometimes you want to place, replace Ronaldo and you end up with Egghorst. Um, I don't think it will happen because I don't think Ten Hag wants to go. I don't think Ineos want Ten Hag to go. But look, how... how I don't even know what the word would be. If, if Eric Ten Hag went and took one of the biggest jobs in world football because Bayern Munich want him and we end up with Gareth Southgate, who's the winner? You know, so look... It's just, it, 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 I find it absolutely baffling. There will, this, I don't, I don't really get it. There is this weird thing out there that Eric Ten Hag is a bad coach, that he's a fraud, right? And yet he retains a massive amount of, expect, uh, of um, respect in the world game. If Man United part ways with Eric Ten Hag, he isn't going to wander back to, to the Netherlands with the tail between the legs and manage Utrecht. He will end up managing a Serie A team or a Bayern Munich or a La Liga team. He will, because he's that level of coach. Even if Ma even if Man United got rid of him in the summer, he'd still walk away from Man United saying, I took over the worst Man United team in Premier League history. We got to two cup finals and we finished third. We won a trophy. And then in my second season, I managed a team that was taken over halfway through the season in turmoil, the worst ever injury season they've ever had. And I took us to an FA Cup final. I mean, CV-wise, you could walk into any European job in Europe with your Ajax CV and say, well, look, it was a hard job at Man United, but I took over the worst Premier League side ever. We've got to two cup finals and we've qualified for the Champions League. And in my second season, there was a sale going on. So the summer was a bloody waste of time. And I had the worst injury record known in United history. And we, fit, and we got to a cup final. So people would look at it and go, yeah, I can see why it wasn't his fault. So I think whatever happens with Ten Hag, if, if United decide to sack him, they're not ending a career. I would not be surprised if he went on and had a good career elsewhere, which is which would just be incredible if we, we if we if we did it. The fact that Ineos aren't shutting down these rumours gives life to irrelevant journalists to get a pay rise and keep attacking our club and honour, says Travel Guide. Well, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not... Um, I, I don't think there's any truth in this at all, but I'm not going to sit here and say that um, Ineos don't have a part to play. I think that their PR isn't as good as it could be. Um, I thought that interview with Sir Jim Radcliffe the other day was very good. It's with a cycling podcast. Like, we got a load of information about Man United because Sir Jim Radcliffe did a cycling podcast. That That's crap, PR. He should be doing that... With the United stand. Um, no, but well, imagine if he did. But the point is, like, he should be doing that with BBC or or, 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 or with MUTV or something like that. You know, every question he was asked there could have been asked by MUTV. So the PR is not great. They don't shut these rumours down. Um, we haven't got the director of football. It, I feel it's drifting a little bit with, with, with Ineos at the moment. I think they'll get it back on track. But from that initial bounce of we want to do this, we want to do that... Um, the Barada appointment was very, very impressive, but it is drifting a little bit. And 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 look, if I if I'm Sir Jim Radcliffe, and he's watching or he's listening or he's reading, we've just had a massive bounce of positivity after beating Liverpool, and the media have destroyed that with this ridiculously bullshit story. Now, I suppose you've got to look at it and go, could there be any truth in it? Like, could there be any truth in it? Are they? trying to suppress the fan base by, you know, feeding them something until they get used to it. You know, if you feed enough shit, people will swallow it, I suppose. Um, but this is Manchester United. Like, the, the Manchester United fan base is very similar to the Liverpool fan base, even though we dislike each other. Fundamentally, there is a knowledge, passion and understanding of what this football club actually is. And maybe there are clubs out there that you can just feed them shit and they'll swallow it. But not at Manchester United. You're not going to get the majority of the United fan base behind Gareth Southgate if he's unveiled as the manager in July. I think the United fan base, if it happened, would have to go... Oh. 
I hope this works, but the amount of disdain and anger that would be pent up from day one would immediately come out as soon as things start to go wrong. It's, it's what, look, it happened with David Moyes. A lot of people didn't want David Moyes, but the echoes of the words of Sir Alex Ferguson retiring and saying, you've got to get behind the next manager sort of made us all go, let's get behind the next manager. But it didn't last long. You know, Sir Alex Ferguson's the greatest manager we've ever had. He stood on the pitch and said, get behind the next manager. We tried for about two months and then we realised what we feared. He wasn't good enough. And David Moyes' CB is way better than Southgate's, by the way. So, look, if any if any of us are trying to push uh, a campaign to, you know, break down United fans into submission about Gareth Southgate, two things. One, it won't work. And two, you need to sod off. Like, if, if that's your great plan for Manchester United, then... I'm not saying you're worse than the Glazers, nobody can be, but you're certainly not going to take us back to the top of English football by bringing in... I mean, is that the plan? We want to be back on top of English football. Who's the England manager? I mean, come on, you've got to be better than that. Um, Jerry says, off topic, I saw Malassia at the hotel I work in at Amsterdam. He had a short conversation and he confirmed what you said. He did indeed relapse and said he might be available for the last two games, says Jerry. Is that an exclusive from Jerry? Or is it... Not. We'll find out. Uh, Levi says, I think Radcliffe is giving himself the space to keep Ten Hag. Does win the FA Cup by saying the patience with Arteta as he won the FA Cup, then went on to do what he's done, says Levi. Uh, Travel Guide says, the fact that Ineos aren't... I've done that one from Travel Guide. Um, do you... Jevon says, do you think United have leaked this Southgate story just for United fans who are Eric Outers to appreciate him more for when they extend his contract, says Jevon. <laughs> I'd like that. I don't think it's true. Um, do a poll and then ban all the Southgate inners, says Basil. Uh, do you think Delo could be moulded into a holding midfielder and keep Wan-Bissaka starting at right back, says Corey? Or just buy for Impong. Uh, Matthias says that Southgate got the England job because he wears a waistcoat. And um, Nick P says it's not good enough from our so-called ex-legends also. The disrespect is unreal. If I was Ten Hag, I would call them out in defiance. Jose style, says Nick P. Well, look, at the end of the day, um, I, I, there's one place I know I can come on a morning at 10 o'clock and 8 o'clock and get some real passionate opinion. And I'm, I'm grateful that I can do that because I just find, you know, a lot of people say social media is bad and there is a lot of bad on social media. But I don't know what I'd do with it having to read. I mean, imagine living in the world 25 years ago and having this going on. All you'd get is journalists feeding this absolute nonsense. But I do think that we need to um, just revisit this. I think it's really important from a responsibility point of view. You are free to have your own opinions and make your own minds up. But I can say this, so I will. It's not fair. I might be wrong, actually, but I don't think I am. It's not fair that people like Harry Maguire, Luke Shaw, Marcus Rashford are basically being linked with wanting Gareth Southgate as the next Man United manager. Because that is toxic. That is mutiny. That is treachery. That is stabbing your manager in the back and your current fans for a, for a Pratt manager. Um, and I didn't see any evidence of that from Maguire or Rashford on Sunday. So I think it's disgusting that current players in an important season are being associated with a Gareth, Gareth Southgate story. And if I was Marcus Rashford or Harry Maguire this morning, I'd be absolutely fuming. I'd be absolutely fuming that, you know, stories are out, vague stories are out there like that, and it can only be them. Um, it's, not, it's not fair. And there already is a lot of frustration in this fan base without, you know, players being targeted for something that I just don't think that they do. Uh, AK says there are toxic players at the club. Look, maybe I'm completely wrong. I mean, look, honestly, when Jose Mourinho was in charge, certain players went behind his back to Woodward and got in the sack. Uh, they downed tools as well. Player power at Man United, I'm not going to pretend it hasn't existed over the last few years. Some players in that dressing room have been part of that player power culture. We need to remove that player power culture. We don't necessarily have to remove the players, but we need to remove the player power culture. We need a disciplined dressing room that respects the manager, respects the club, respects the fans. We don't need... I mean, I absolutely do not understand in my time as playing football, coaching football, at an amateur level, would I ever 
take a couple of players from the dressing room and ask them for advice? No, no, I, I don't need it. I've got an assistant coach, you know, I've got a management. I don't need players to tell me what's best for my club. I don't need it. Your job is to win things. Look, maybe back in the day, if I was Sir Alex, I might bring Roy Keane in the office just to see what's going on in the dressing room. But I wouldn't ask him about signings. I wouldn't ask him about assistant coaches. And Roy Keane was basically the manager on the pitch. I don't really give a shit what a player thinks about the coach. I don't really give a shit what the manager thinks about the coach. In fact, if I was a coach, I'd quite like the fact that some of the players don't like me because I'd be like, well, look, they're playing for me. You know, some... One of the things I've always said to people, like when I used to work in banking and stuff, is that when you promote somebody to being a manager, one of the first things I would always say is, you know, like when you're going for lunch with these people and you're going for a drink with these people that you used to work with on a level, you're now managing them. You can continue to do that, but you will find it gets very, very difficult because you're managing them, which means you've got to say no to their annual leave, which means you've got to promote one of them and not promote the other one which means you've got to ask one of them to stay late when they want to have a you know time at home. You've got to make decisions that they're not going to like. Now, when you're working with them, that's great because you're all you're all the same together. But when you're their manager, you're going to still be going down the pub with them and having a meal with them. Fair play if you do, but you've got to manage. And management isn't about being friendly with everybody. It's about respect. It's about leading. I don't need to hear from... Harry Maguire or Luke Shaw about whether we should sack Eric Ten Hag and bring Gareth Southgate in. In fact, let's run that scenario through because it's bullshit. It's not happened. But if, I, if I'm Sir Jim Radcliffe and I get a knock on the door and it's Harry Maguire and Luke Shaw and they say, Eric's trying his best, but he's a little bit too strict. Um, we had to drive home in the dark last night because uh, we were training that late and he's making us run around a lot. Gareth at England doesn't do that and we really like him and we think we'd play better with Gareth. So can you give Gareth the job? If I was to Jim Radcliffe, I'd say, get on your phone, get your agent because you're fired. Now fuck off out my office because I would look at that and go, and this is, you know, sometimes you've got to break it down and realise that these written words in the press that we read and take as true, when you fundamentally break them down, they're fantasy. So these United players that are on board with Gareth Southgate being the next United manager. Let's run that scenario through. So Sir Jim Radcliffe sits there and goes, all right, OK, so Rashi, Harry and Lukey want Gareth Southgate as the manager. Sir David, what do you think about that? And Sir David Brailsford goes, well, one, they're treacherous bastards because we're in a really important season and they're not putting the club first. They're thinking about their next manager. Two, well, what they like Southgate because it's a holiday three times a year where they go to a lovely hotel, meet all their mates, play against shit teams. They're better than everybody else. So it's like being on holiday. What goes on tour stays on tour. It's not reality. And third, and most importantly, Sir Jim, of course they're going to like Gareth Southgate. Because he likes them. He selects them for England when they don't even play that well. Of course they're going to want him to be Man United job because they think he's going to keep them here forever and give them good wages. It's, to be honest with you, Sir Jim, if those players want Southgate, I would do the opposite because it's completely and utterly biased and we want to get in a real world. So, you know, actually, it's not true. It's really unfair on those players to be linked to that story. But even if it was true, I would throw it in the bin. Because it's a biased opinion. It's an absolutely biased opinion. Uh, Eric Ten Hag can stop speculation by getting results. Of course he can international and he is. Hi Mark, justice for George. Rabbits eat their poo to get all their nutrients from it. They can. Put some respect on George's name, says Luke. Hi Mark, just watch That's Football. And would you rather Colwell for 40 million or Branthwaite for 60? Love the show, uh, says Elho. I really like Colwell, but I think the Chelsea thing probably puts me off, whereas taking an Everton player, they're less of a rival, and um, I'd take Branthwaite. Uh, do you feel like this Southgate PR has anything to do with getting cosy with the English powers that be in order to get the funding for a new stadium, or is that a stretch, says Mike? Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. I can't comment on that. Um Jerry says, um, off topic, I've done that one from Jerry as well. Thank you very much for your super chats, by the way. Um, 
I've got to bring this in. I'm going to call it the Chuff Monster section. So what's the Chuff Monster? Um, well, basically, it's the people who basically pass opinion on something when for most of that time they're up their mum's chuff. So they've been renamed as Chuff Monsters. So what we're we talking about? Well, it's a bit of news. Um, it's been floating around social media a little bit. Um, the debate about the top five managers in Premier League history. And a lot of people have been putting Sir Alex second or third and putting Pep first. And some people have even put Klopp second. Um, welcome to the world of recency bias, where anything that existed longer than 15 years ago is wiped from history. So when people talk about the best Premier League managers in history, they're talking about from 2008, because that is about 15 if you think about 25 year olds, 15 years ago, they'd be 10. So their memory only really serves them to go from 2008. Chuff monsters. Well, here's, here's a message to the chuff monsters. The Premier League started in 1992, not 2008. So actually, you're missing 50% of it. Because 92 to 2008, funnily enough, is 16 years. And 2008 today is 16 years. So these chuff monsters who put Pep Guardiola number one are ignoring 50% of Premier League history. So Pep Guardiola is the greatest Premier League manager. OK, bollocks. He might play the best football, but that doesn't make you the greatest manager. And even I would question if he plays the best football because I find it quite boring compared to Klopp or Prime Sir Alex. But let me just say this to these chuff monsters. One, I cannot pass judgment on Eusebio, Pele, Socrates, George Best because I didn't see them play. And I will not and cannot pass judgment on taped VHS YouTube clips because George Best has less than 5% of his career on footage. That is terrifying. So all these little clips you see of genius George Best, 95% of his career wasn't recorded. So imagine what he was doing in that. So these people who want to pass judgment on Dennis Irwin, or Gary Neville, or Eric Cantona, or Mark Hughes, or, or any other United great that played between 92 and, and 96, they haven't watched them play. Because they're not on YouTube watching every bloody game. No chance. Some of us did see it. And when it comes to the manager, when it, when it comes to the manager, and it comes to the greatest Premier League manager of all time, you're an absolute buffoon if you're putting Pep Guardiola ahead of him. Because all you're doing it is recency bias and hipster tactics. And it's not enough. It's not enough. I'm sorry. He inherited a football club that potentially cheated its way to the top. He inherited a football club that had won the Premier League the year before he came in and came second a couple of months before he came in. So the team was already winning when he came in. The team was already filthy rich when he came in and they gave him an open checkbook when he came in. Yes, he played good football. Pep Guardiola played good football. But he inherited a team that was winning titles and he inherited an open checkbook. Give Gareth Southgate the job. Pretty much the same sort of thing. Sir Alex Ferguson came down from Aberdeen to take over a Man United side that hadn't won the league in nearly 20 years. He rebuilt a broken football club from top to bottom and reigned over a dynasty for nearly 30 years. There is no better manager in Premier League history. And I've lived it. I've lived it. Jurgen Klopp doesn't get close. Wenger was good, but doesn't get close. Pep Guardiola's good, but doesn't get close. So all these chuff monsters shouting out that Pep Guardiola is the best manager in Premier League history. Don't let them wind you up. They didn't watch half of the Premier League. And they certainly haven't done their research on what Sir Alex Ferguson built from nothing to dynasty. Pep Guardiola walked in and inherited a dynasty that was already multi-rich, multi-domination, 
and had an open checkbook. Pep Guardiola is a fantastic coach, but let's not pretend that he should go down as the greatest Premier League manager in history because his story is a silver spoon in his mouth, inherited wealth. Whereas Sir Alex Ferguson is a working class story from rags to riches. There is no better story. There is no better manager in Premier League history. Mic drop. But you know what? <clears throat> it, it, it is true. Like, you know, uh, it's very difficult for the for the younger fan to really appreciate. And I heard Kobe Mainu talking about it the other day about Cantona. When, <clears throat> obviously, oh, <clears throat> oh, I'm joking here. It's really hard. It's really, really hard. And I, people were saying, oh, you're being ageist. I'm not being ageist. I, I actually um, quantified it at the start. Lots of people say to me, who's your favourite Man United player? And I've always said to you, I can only go off what I know. Like people say to me, Brian Robson's better than Roy Keane. But I think Roy Keane's better because the Brian Robson I saw predominantly was the early 90s one. Uh, late 80s, I didn't see him that much because we didn't have Sky. <clears throat> you couldn't stream games. You couldn't watch every game. United weren't on the telly every week. So you didn't, I didn't really even, even, you know, Brian Robson was good in the late 80s. He got injured a lot, but he was still good. But I didn't get to see him anywhere near as much. Football really, the Premier League reinvented football. It suddenly became way more accessible. You saw more of it. So when people say who's the greatest Man United player, I only ever do it based on what I know. I can't, <clears throat> I can't talk to you about George Best. I can't talk to you about Brian Robson. I can't talk to you about Steve Koppel. I can't talk to you about Sir Bobby Charlton because I didn't see them. So if I say to you, Duncan Edwards is the greatest player that Man United have ever, ever had. I'm, do I'm doing it off Sir Bobby Charlton's word or my granddad's word. It's not my word. I can't give it. I wish I had seen it, but I didn't. But I can tell you how great David Beckham was. Roy Keane was, Cantona was, because I saw it. But there is this obsession in the modern world where you get a chuff monster telling you that Kevin De Bruyne is the best midfielder the Premier League has ever had, but you didn't watch over half, half of it. So how can you say? You, you, you know, Rob Lee might be better than Kevin De Bruyne for all you know. He wasn't. But you know what I mean? It's, um, it's a... It's, look, it, it's a nonsense. And, and people get very protective of it and say, well... You, you can't say that I don't know anything about the Premier League because I'm not old enough. But I'm telling you, I can and I will because I can't tell you about George Best because I didn't see him. I can't tell you about Brian Robson because I didn't see him. So if I want to know how good Ryan Giggs is in Man United's all-time wingers, I'll go and speak to Ricky because he can tell me what a lot of those players were that I never saw. But I can't tell you. So, and you can't tell me that Pep Guardiola is the best, great, the greatest Premier League manager in, in history because I'll look at your passport and go, yeah, you're up your mum's chuff, mate. Sorry. Um, I've watched the game, but I haven't watched all of it. Well, look, you know, experience has to be a thing. Has to be a thing. Knowledge has to be a thing. It's like, it's like, you know what? It's like, it's like someone in the army who didn't fight in World War II telling you that, you know, another battle was better. If you, if you didn't see it, how can you know about it? And YouTube clips don't do it justice. They really don't. Um, who is your favourite NBA team and player? Says LeBron. LeBron. Um, not really into it massively. I, I liked the, the last dance, but um, not really massively into it. Don't have time to be. They, they play too often. Uh, G says, three managers that don't have a say with transfers. De Zerbi, Potter and Southgate can only pick England players. Clear we want a submissive manager, says G. I find that terrifying, by the way. And we do need to keep um, we need we need to keep a mind an eye on that because I absolutely do not think that putting a manager in place who's just a coach is a good idea. I think it's a dictatorship. I don't think it'll work in the Premier League. It's not what Pep does. It's not what Klopp does. It's not what Arteta does. Man United can't have a manager who just gets given players. It's too. It's just. Ugh, it's too formulaic. Can you imagine Sir Alex Ferguson managing Man United and just get given the players, doesn't have any say in it? Can you imagine Pep Guardiola at Man City just getting given the players with no say in it? The personality of the manager dies. It's, you know, 
the respons the responsibility of the manager dies as well. It, it's a horrible way to run a football club. Uh, um, Jerry says he's going to DM us the video when he saw Malassia. Uh, Amadi says, hey, it's my first super chat. I want us to have a depth. It's also a concern because if, like, for example, Ericsson is in the bench, now he wants to leave. We do need depth, Amad Amadi, but I think that shouldn't stop us selling players. Um, but we do need depth. Um, Terp says, I wouldn't trust Ricky about uh, George Best anyway because he loved Dan James and Ashley Young. That's a good point. Uh, be watchful of former players. They're sitting on the feints again on Southgate rumours, says David. Well, also, mate, be watchful of ex-players. I mean, it's only just dropped into my head. Be watchful of ex-players because some of those ex-players are now on the board of Man United. You know, Gary Neville is working with Sir Jim on the regeneration of Old Trafford. Is he ever now going to sit there and say it's a bloody disgrace to bring Southgate in? So this is what I mean. You know, people take the criticism out of yourselves and, and this community, but there's no ulterior motive and there's no censored conversation it's uncensored it's a disgrace to bring gareth southgate into this football club if i'm on the board helping sir jim rebuild old trafford i ain't gonna say that i'm not gonna say that because you're part you're part of the team aren't you you're one of the you're one of the lads eric ten Hag can stop space i've uh, done that one um thoughts on amory in the bundesliga says ryan i don't really have any thoughts on him mate um until Man United start getting linked to him. I don't. But this is why this type of content was, is always going to be really important. Because it's uncensored. And uh, uh, fundamentally, the, the, the whole core of it is about what we believe is best for Manchester United. And we will disagree on that. But, you know, at least we can, we can say it. Um, Manchester United have identified 40 million rated Wolves midfielder Gomez as a potential replacement for Casemiro this summer. And that's coming in from the mirror. And yet Fabrizio said two days ago, we're not going to buy a holding midfielder or a midfielder. So cheers, guys. Cheers, Mark. Glad to be on my 12th month as a member. Says Isaiah, thank you very much for getting your badge in, mate. Don't get to catch the afternoon and morning shows often as I'm in Canada. I'm glad I'm here today. Well, you hopefully you do catch the 8 o'clock shows because they've been absolutely brilliant this week. And uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed them. And uh, I will be on the 8 o'clock show with you later as well. Uh, we've also got a 2 o'clock show for you as well. And I'm, I'll tell you what, on a positive note, I mean, we will, I'll just when Southgate's on, I'll look away. But I'm looking forward to England against Brazil on Saturday night. Uh, doing a watch along for that, of course. But I'm looking forward to that. I think it'll be a very interesting game. Uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. Make sure you smash a like on the video and subscribe. Uh, Liam says politics to fund a new stadium equals political manager. Yeah, I don't want United going down this road of a political manager who's just a face for the board who buy the players. It's not. It just feels soulless to me. That's not Man United. So Jim Radcliffe is meant to be a lifelong Man United fan. If he's a lifelong Man United fan, he'll know about Sir Matt Busby. He'll know about Sir Alex Ferguson. He will know what Man United is. And Man United need a charismatic manager who is fundamentally involved in the football club, who is involved in transfers, who is the representation and the face of the football club. I don't want us to have a soulless manager who basically is on the training ground being given things. It's, there's no personality to it. It'd be horrible. Glad to, uh, thank you very much. Anyway, great, great show today. Uh, please do smash a like on the video and subscribe. I will catch you all a little bit later. Take care. And the one thing I'm going to say, um, Robert McCormack says, Neville has always talked up Southgate, to be fair. I mean, that's just terrifying. If that's true, Robert, you know, I've kept, ne I've not spoke about Neville much recently. Um, but if he wants to have that, then I'm ready for it. I mean, not, not that he'd ever talked to me about it, but you know what I mean? I'll call it out. It's a, it's a joke. He's got, I'll leave you with this. Style of play. Southgate hasn't got one. Come back at me. He hasn't. Go, go searching for it. Go searching for it. You've got no chance of finding it. He's got no style of play. It's crap. Crap, crap, crap. He's indoctrinated into international football. He's been there for eight years. How's he going to come and manage one of the best clubs in the world week in, week out? And the demands of that and the media and the quality and the fans. He's an indoctrinated politician manager. No chance. Absolutely not. Take care, everyone. Speak to you in a bit. And most important of all, don't be going in on Rashford or Maguire or Shaw because they want Southgate because I think it's a load of bollocks. Take care.